It was late at night and I was the only car on the road. Suddenly, I noticed another car behind me, following me closely. At first, I didn't think much of it, assuming that they were just going in the same direction as me. But as the minutes passed, I started to feel uneasy. The car behind me never attempted to pass me or change lanes. They simply stayed behind me, following me wherever I went. I tried to shake them off by taking a few turns, but the car continued to follow me like it was glued to my tail. I began to feel my heart race with fear, my hands gripping the steering wheel tightly. It was as if I was being stalked by this mysterious car, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was about to happen. Then, without warning, the car behind me suddenly swerved to the side of the road and pulled over. I felt a sense of relief wash over me as I drove past, thinking that the worst was over. But as I looked in my rearview mirror, I saw the car's headlights turn on again, and it began to follow me once more. This time, the car was driving erratically, weaving in and out of lanes and coming dangerously close to hitting me. My heart was pounding in my chest as I tried to come up with a plan. I knew I had to get away from this car, but I didn't know how. Just then, the car behind me suddenly turned off the road and disappeared into the darkness. I let out a sigh of relief, feeling like I had narrowly escaped a terrible fate. But as I continued driving, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every sound made me jump, and I found myself looking over my shoulder repeatedly, even though I knew there was nothing there. It wasn't until I got home and locked my doors that I finally felt safe. But the memory of that car, and the terror it had caused, stayed with me long after that night. I never forgot the strange silence, the stalking car, and the feeling of dread that had filled me that night. A friend of mine told me this story about a girl she met from Sweden who was staying with her as a couch surfer. The girl was in her mid-twenties and while my friend told me her name I never remembered it, just the content of this horrific story that will never leave my mind. So this girl, let's call her Jane, was driving to her mother's house, they lived far out of the city and in a highly forested area. There were no street lights and not a lot of houses. If there were houses they were built back into the forest with long winding driveways before any sign of life. So Jane was a late teenager driving back to her mother's home in the late evening. As she was driving something up ahead on the road caught her eye, it was a small bundle next to the road and as her car passed the bundle she was shocked, it looked like a baby wrapped up in a blanket. Jane smashed the brakes stopping 50 meters up the road. She revered back a little and then jumped out of the car as quick as she could thinking that someone had abandoned a baby on the road. Jane ran over to the bundled up blanket and exhaled a sigh of relief. It was just a toy baby. Just as she had picked up the baby she saw headlights coming down the road in front of her. Suddenly realizing she was standing on the road alone at night she ran quickly back to her car and jumped in chucking on the engine and driving off. The car behind her sped up coming up really close to the back of her car, tooting its horn at her. Jane was panicking. She started driving faster and faster, constantly checking her review mirror. Although she couldn't who was in the car behind her, she was still terrified. Eventually, she reached her mother's driveway, which was still about two kilometers long. Her mother lived deep into the forest. She thought to herself that if the car followed her down the driveway she would call her mother and tell her to ring the police and as she turned onto the driveway, the car behind her also turned into the driveway still very close behind her. I remember part of the story was that she kept thinking back to the baby toy and how creepy the evening had been. Jane got her phone and called her mother, she told her she was being followed and to call the police. She was expected to arrive in about 5 minutes. The car was still following very close and both cars were going way too fast for the type of road and for no street lights. Jane could see nothing but what was being lit by her headlights and the headlights of her pursuer. Then she saw her mother's house in the distance of her headlights the pursuers still very close behind her, still beeping the horn so loudly Jane's ears rang. As she got to the house she jumped out of the car. Her mother was standing at the front of the house waiting for her with a kitchen knife in her hand. Jane ran up to her as quickly as she could. 
The car that was following also stopped and the doors of the car flew open. An elderly couple jumped out of the car and were yelling and pointing to Jane's car. Someone got into your CR. They screamed. As Jane was realizing what had happened a man jumped out of the back seat of Jane's car and ran into the forest. Everyone just looked at each other in shock as Jane realized what had just happened. The car coming down the road had seen someone jump into her car when she stopped to check the baby. It was most likely they had left it there on the road watching for people to stop, taking advantage of people's kindness. As I said at the start of this post, a friend of mine told me this story and I believe it to be true. If anyone else has heard of this send a comment. I don't believe it was the guy's first time trying this. Always lock your doors when you get out of your car. It was a dark and stormy night and I was driving down a deserted road in the middle of nowhere. The rain was coming down hard and the wind was blowing so fiercely that it felt like the car could be swept off the road at any moment. I had been driving for hours, trying to get home after a long road trip. I was exhausted, and the rain was making it hard to see the road ahead. But I knew I had to keep going. That's when I saw her, a woman standing in the middle of the road, her long hair blowing wildly in the wind. I hit the brakes, but it was too late. The car skidded and collided with her. As I stepped out of the car, I saw her crawl towards me on all fours. Her eyes were glowing an unnatural green color, and her skin was as pale as the moon. I tried to help her up, but she lashed out with inhuman strength, knocking me back onto the ground. I stumbled back to the car and tried to drive away, but she clung onto the hood with a grip that felt like steel, scratching and clawing at the windshield. I could hear her screeching and growling, and I realized that she wasn't human. I drove as fast as I could, trying to shake her off the car, but she kept pace with me, never letting go. Her eyes never left mine, and I could feel her gaze burning into me like a laser beam. I knew I had to do something, so I tried to swerve the car to the side of the road, hoping to knock her off. But as I hit the brakes, the car spun out of control and crashed into a tree. I woke up a few minutes later, my head throbbing and my vision blurry. The car was wrecked and the creature was nowhere to be seen. But I could hear her voice echoing in my mind, and I knew she was still out there. I stumbled out of the car and started walking down the road, hoping to find some help. But every time I looked over my shoulder, I could see her, standing in the darkness, her eyes glowing like embers in the night. I walked for what felt like hours, my mind numb with fear and exhaustion. But no matter how far I went, the creature was always there, following me, watching me. Finally, I saw light in the distance, and I ran towards it, my heart pounding in my chest. As I got closer, I realized that it was a gas station, and I stumbled inside, gasping for air. The attendant looked at me with concern as I explained what had happened. But when we went outside, the creature was nowhere to be seen. I never saw her again, but I could feel her presence in my nightmares stalking me through the darkness. To this day, I don't know what that creature was or where it came from, but I know that I never want to encounter it again.